Mike leaves his house traveling two miles per hour. Joy leaves six hours later to catch up with him traveling eight miles per hour. How long will it take her to catch up with him? I hope you're taking notes because I'm giving you hints on how to tear apart these questions. And there's only so many ways that they can ask these questions. And if you do enough of these problems, you're going to see that they keep asking the same question in a little bit different way, but it's the same questions over and over again. So here's another hint. Joy is going to catch up with Mike. Catch up, pass, overtake are the same word for the race is over and they've both gone the same distance. So that's a good hint to know that D1 is going to equal D2. Sometimes you'll see that a car passes another car or a jet passes another car or exceeds or whatever. But that's a good way to know that that's what we're talking about. It's the same problem and D1 is going to equal D2. So let's write that on our grid. And they told us that Mike is traveling at two miles per hour. Joy is traveling at eight miles per hour. And Joy has been traveling six hours less. That is, she starts six hours later, which means she's going to be traveling six hours less. That would be T1 minus six. And we got all our slots filled in. And we can see for the first object in motion, that is to say Mike, D1 equals 2T1. Yeah, that's pretty simple. It looks right like that. And let's see Joy's formula. Joy is D1, 2, and it equals 8 times parentheses T1 minus 6. Okay, good. And let's take that second formula out of the parentheses. Make sure you multiply it times both terms in the parentheses. And let's insert D1 equals 2 times T1 into the second formula. So D1 is going to become 2 times T1. Do you see that? Okay, and let's bring the 2 T1 over to the other side. Bring everything down. And we got a zero on the left-hand side. I don't think that's happened before, but that's okay. If we bring negative 48 over, that's going to become positive 48. Bring everything down again. Divide everything by six. And I'm writing tiny sixes because we're running out of room, but six over six is one. And that's going to isolate our T1. 48 over six is 8 and T1 equals 8. Okay, let's go back to the grid. Joy is T1 minus 6. T1 is 8. 8 minus 6 is 2. Mike is T1 and that would be 8. And the question was, how long will it take her to catch up with him? Well, her is Joy, so that would be 2 hours. But anyways, let's finish this out. Joy's rate and time is 8 times 2. That would be 16. Mike's time is 2 times 8. That would be 16. And D1 equals D2. So everything pencils out. Our answer was 2. And let's do our next problem. On a 130 mile trip, a car traveled an average speed of 55 miles per hour and then reduced its speed to 40 miles per hour for the remainder of the trip. The trip took two and a half hours. For how long did the car travel 40 miles per hour? And we've talked about this before, where you're doing one trip, but you're going at two different speeds. For the first part of the trip, you're going one speed, and for the second part of the trip, you're going another speed. So we're going to take the whole trip and we're going to divide it into two so that we can have two bodies in motion. Now it says that the total time that we're gone is two and a half hours. So that's going to be T1 
plus T2 equals T total. Okay, it said the whole trip took two and a half hours. That would be T total. And it said that the whole trip was 130 miles. That would be D1 plus D2 equals D total. Okay, so let's go to our grid. Okay, the first body in motion is going to be fast. We're going to call it fast. And the second body in motion, we're going to call that slow. Now the rate for the first body in motion was 55 miles per hour. The rate for the second body in motion was 40 miles per hour. Now we've already agreed that this is D total. So for the second body in motion, the distance D2 is going to equal 130 minus D1. Remember, don't put 130 minus D1 for one of the distances and 130 minus D2 for the second one. If you do that, you have not eliminated a variable and that's what we're trying to do is we're doing all of this so that we can eliminate these variables one at a time. So the fast motion is going to be D1 and the same thing is true for time. We're going to say that the slow speed, T2, is going to equal 2.5 minus T1. And for T1, let's just put in T1. So we filled in all of our slots and let's start building our formulas. For the fast body in motion, we have D1 equals 55 times T1. Take a look at that grid. Make sure you understand what I'm doing. D1 equals 55 T1. And for the second body in motion, D2 equals 130 minus D1. So it's going to be parentheses 130 minus D1 equals 40 times parentheses 2.5 minus T1, unparentheses. And that looks a little complex, but it's really not too bad. The reason why there are so many numbers and variables in there is because we've never had D total and T total in the same problem. And the D total and the T total, as you know, give us two terms in the variable. But right here, we have D1 or negative D1. And we know what D1 equals. It equals 55 T1. So let's insert that. Yeah, we had to squeeze that in there a little bit. And why don't we bring this out of the parentheses. There we go. And the negative 55 T1 is the smallest variable. Remember, the bigger number that you have when it's negative makes it a smaller number. So we're going to bring the smaller number over here under the negative 40. Bring all that down. Very good, we have a positive T1, 15 T1, and let's bring the 100 over to the other side. Let's bring all that down. There we go, getting simpler all the time, and let's divide both sides by 15, which isolates T1. 30 over 15 is two, that would be two hours, so T1 equals two hours. Let's go back to the grid. So the fast speed is T1, and that equals two hours. The slow speed is two and a half hours minus two. That would be just a half hour, 0.5. And that's the answer to the question of how long did the car travel 40 miles per hour? It would be for a half hour, 0.5 hours. And let's fill out the rest of the grid so that we know we're on the mark. Rate times time, that's R2 times T2 would be 40 times 0.5 is 20. That's good. And the fast speed would be R1 times T1. That would be 55 times 2, which is 110 miles. And let's see, 110 miles plus 20 miles is a total trip of 130 miles. So all that pans out, so that's all correct, but that's just us checking our work. 
And that is it. And I hope that you really did stop after each one of these questions and redid it yourself. If you didn't, you have plenty of homework to test this out. Now I went through the homework and the only thing that you might be concerned with is homework problem number 20, where they're using meters and seconds instead of miles and hours. Doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Just for D, be using meters. For rate, it's meters per second. And for time, it's gonna be seconds. The answer is gonna be in seconds. So don't come up with an answer for T and say, well, it's eight hours, when really it was eight seconds. I'm not saying that's the answer, it's not the answer, but be careful of that. And when you get done with this homework, if you have mastered this section, you have mastered the most difficult thing in algebra, algebra one or algebra two. And you will see a lot of these problems on the ACT and SAT, and so you will be light years ahead of everybody else.